Good morning and welcome to Mother's Day, uh, May 9th, 2021, and happy Mother's Day to everyone who's watching by video and to everyone in the church. Our sermon for this morning is taken from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 6 through 13. And the story today is God loves hurting moms. The sixth verse in the first chapter says, Naomi and her daughters-in-law started on the way back from the country of Moab. While they were still in Moab, she had heard the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she left that place where she had been living and her two daughters-in-law went with her. They began to walk along the road back to Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, go back to Moab. Don't stay with me. Each of you should go back to your mother's house. May the Lord be kind to you as you've been to me. May the Lord repay you. When she kissed them goodbye, they began to cry loudly, and they said, we'll go back with you. Your people be our people, and Naomi says, no, go back. I'm too old to get married again. If I said I would have hope to have a husband and then have children to provide another son for each of you, no. You couldn't wait that long. What would keep you from finding someone marrying? No, my daughters. Now here's mom talking to her daughters-in-law. My bitterness is much worse than yours because the Lord has sent me so much trouble. May God add his blessing to each mom through his word to you today. Naomi feels like a failure. I think if there's one word that describes mom's feeling inside so often when you struggle, it's that sense of, I'm a failure. I failed my kids, I failed my husband, I failed the job, and that weight drags your heart down. And you end up feeling just like Naomi. Everything is against me. I've lost it all and I don't know where God is. Does he see me? Does he know? Look at the trouble. Naomi says, look at the trouble the Lord sent into my life. Her husband's died. Her two sons have died. Now she's planning on going back alone. Women don't do things alone. They always do them together. That's just how women are built. All she has heard is that the Lord has blessed Judah her homeland, Bethlehem, her birthplace, her town, with food. She left without any, and she's going back emptier than when she left. Now, no husband, no sons. Empty. An empty heart, an empty home. Because no one will be in the old house back home. A failure. I don't know any mom that doesn't feel like that at some time during the years between childbirth and adult kids and adult grandkids. That sense of failing just seems to nag. I found this from a website that's called keeperofthehome.org. Things you need to hear when you feel like you're a failure as a mom. She writes, I was having one of those days that I call a mom guilt day. The baby wasn't sleeping well. I was up half the night. I didn't get to shower. The hot was, house was a complete disaster from the previous week. I was feeling extra sorry for myself because it was a Saturday. My husband was headed out to work for an extra long day of work. Inside, grouchiness. I made a feeble attempt to be kind, but it was a big snowball effect of slightly sharp tones, impatiently barked commands, cold cups of coffee, and way too many expectations. By the end of the day, I was nearly in tears. I was mad at my kids and mad at myself. The worst thing of all was the disconnect I felt from them as their little hearts and mind clashed all day long. I posted that status on my personal Facebook about achieving an F minus in motherhood. Sweet encouragement and words of truth began popping up. 
in my inbox from mamas who've been there and get it. As wisdom and truth began to permeate my heart, I could feel my lungs constricting slowly, my shoulders relaxing a tiny bit. Someone was out there. Someone knew. Someone cared. Someone connected. That's the story of Ruth and Naomi. When Naomi's so hurting, someone is there. Ruth. Someone cares. Ruth. Someone connects. Ruth. Someone sticks by her. That's Ruth. Our failures, our weaknesses, our sins, they are not us. Yes, they're the things that sometimes come out of our lives, but that's not us. The us on the inside is the us that God created and shaped into his image. And that's what he sees when he sees you. And so in Jesus, you're a child of God. You're loved by him, and he sees you. And he knows your heart because he shaped it. He knows exactly what hurts and what bothers you and why sometimes you feel like a failure and you feel guilty and you feel like, what good is it? Am I actually benefiting anyone? And all this pain? But you know what? It's easier to believe the lies when you're stressed and tired. And that's the point when you're most vulnerable. And that's the point when you need a good friend. You need a good friend. That's what happened to Naomi. She had had so many hard things happen to her. She began believing the lies. She says, we left full. They didn't. The cupboard was empty. Famine in the land. She says, I come back empty. Not true. She has a young woman with her named Ruth, who's the greatest of friends to her. God has blessed her and cared for her, and yet she says, the Lord has set himself against me, sent me all this trouble. She believed the lie because of the stress and trouble she's gone through. When you go through those periods of time, and they're periods of time, Mom, what you have to say to yourself is this. God is for me and not against me. God is for me and not against me. He who gave his only son for me on the cross, how will he not, along with his son, freely give me everything, all good things? That's from the book of Romans. Naomi believes God has afflicted her, set himself against her. Her words read like this, the Lord sent me so much trouble. But the Bible tells us differently. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 13. This would be written some centuries later by a prophet, Isaiah, who would prophesy about the child that would come from Ruth the Messiah. His words are this, I will comfort you there in Jerusalem as a mother comforts her child. God comforts us as a mom does. And God has comfort for Naomi and a husband for Ruth. Duke Tabor writes this, mothers are very special people. No one has more hopes dreams, ambitions, and love for her child than a mom does. She watches over her child. She hurts when they hurt. She's happy when they're happy. And God hurts when moms hurt. And God helps hurting moms. John chapter 19 is a story of Jesus in the time of his dying for our sins on the cross. He's hanging there. Nails pierced his hands, his feet. Two criminals were dying next to him. One criminal would curse till the moment of his death. The other criminal would recognize that this man dying next to him is no ordinary man. And in the middle of his dying, that's Jesus dying, 
The man next to him simply asks a question. Lord, would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Then Jesus does something remarkable because at the foot of the cross is mom. I can't imagine what it's like to see your son be so cruelly treated, to die such a horrific death, to know who he is. This is a good man. This is a man that came to save his nation. And I hear the people around me and behind me cursing at him. And the religious leaders who should have accepted him and known who he was, mocking him. If you're the Messiah, save yourself. Get off the cross and prove to us who you are. And they hear him say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So at the foot of the cross is another young man, John, youngest of the apostles, standing next to Mary. I have no doubt he's got his arm around her shoulder. Jesus looks down from the cross and he saw his mother standing there, John writes, and the disciple he loved. And then Jesus says, woman, this is now your son. And he turns to John and he said, this is now your mother. And from then on, the disciple, that is John, took her into his home. In his last moments, Jesus cared for his mom. And Jesus will care for you, mom and grandma, just the same way. Jesus knows that she's feeling hurt, bewildered, confused. All the things that were spoken of about Jesus. What about those prophecies? What's happening? He was supposed to bring deliverance, and now the nation that he came to is asking for his death. It was a dark day for mom a dark day for Mary. Many times moms will be faced with dark days. Their hopes and dreams for the children seem to be falling apart. Their lives are turning out differently than what they had believed and hoped and prayed for. It seems, it seems like all their efforts to make a difference in the lives of their kids are now in vain. They may even doubt that they were a good mother at all. But the crucifixion, the crucifixion is not the end of the story. Because on the third day, that man who died on the cross walked out of the grave, Hallelujah. never to die again. And that's not the end of the story either. For that God man is coming back again for all of you moms and for your kids and your grandkids, and your great-grandkids. The crucifixion is the only thing that can offer hope to mom, that there's a God that cares enough about me and my child to send his son to die for us, that we might live forever. In your darkest hour, remind yourself, for God so loved me, the world, that's you, that he sent his only son, that whoever would believe in him, would trust in him, would not perish, but instead have everlasting life. Remember, the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection, and he's coming again. It was God that created families, and in that video we watched just before the sermon, we heard three women wonder if their children ever saw God inside them at all. With Naomi hurting, broken, feeling bitter, and even feeling like God had set himself against her, Ruth could still see the God of Israel inside Naomi. 
she could. And that's why she decided, I'm going back with you. And she says, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Yes, in spite of all that Naomi went through, all her losses, all her pain, her bitterness, even what she said about God setting himself against her, Ruth could see through that. No, no, I know better. I know you, Naomi. And I can see the God of Israel inside you, and he's now my God. Moms, there's always time for God to work a miracle in spite of what you've been through and the times when you feel like you haven't represented God as best as you could. God can step in in those times and by his spirit show what's called the rest of the story. They would come back into the land of Israel they would come back to Bethlehem. And so in the fourth chapter, we're gonna fast forward just a bit to let you find out what has happened to Naomi. In the meantime, Ruth finds her way to a field. She works hard. She brings back food, not just a small amount of food, but a great amount of food. Because there is a young man there who saw a hardworking, virtuous young woman and said to his fellow workers, he was the landowner, Boaz. He said, see that young woman over there? Number one, treat her properly. Men need to hear that today. Treat her right. And secondly, make sure you leave lots of stuff behind for her. She goes home with an apron filled with barley. Naomi's amazed. She said, where have you been? She says, I've been gleaning in the field of Boaz. And Naomi says, he's a cousin, and God's going to use him to do something great. So then she instructs Ruth on what to do. We'll pick that up in the weeks to come. But here's what's known as the rest of the story. Ruth chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. So Boaz, that man who owned the field, who was so good to Ruth, who blessed her and blessed Naomi, took her and she became his wife. And he went in unto her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. Then the women say to Naomi, that's the one who was so hurting. They say to her, blessed is the Lord who has not left you without a redeemer today for there is a redeemer in Israel. And may his name become famous in Israel. May he also be to you a restorer of life and a sustainer of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and is better to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her lap and she became his nurse. And the neighbor women gave him a name saying, a son has been born to Naomi. So they named him Obed. Boaz and Ruth, Ruth bore to him a son named Obed, and Obed had a son named Jesse, and Jesse had a son named David. The father of David. Little did Naomi know when she was in Moab that she would be back one day to Bethlehem, and she would bring this young woman, Ruth, her daughter-in-law, and her daughter-in-law would find a fine man who would marry her, and she would become great-grandmother to David, the great king of Israel, who one day would become the great, 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 many generational great-grandfather of Jesus, born in Bethlehem from the line of David, from the line of Ruth. From them would come the true king of Israel, and one whom the Bible calls the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords and the king and Lord of all creation and the redeemer and savior of everyone who trusts in him, Jesus Christ, born in that little town that people bypassed and thought not too much about. Bethlehem? Yes, Bethlehem. The little town that birthed Naomi, the little town that had a group of people that instilled faith in her, 
the little town that welcomed her back and welcomed her daughter-in-law, Ruth, would provide for her a family. She would become a grandma, and eventually from her would come the Savior. So mom, grandma, great-grandma, remember today, God loves hurting moms. God loves you. God sees you. God is for you. He will help you. He will bless you. He will strengthen you. He will provide for you. He will guide you. And he will replace your sorrow with joy. And in spite of any failures that you think that people would never see God in you, he will help you overcome that. He loves you too much not to. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the moms here today and the moms watching by video, grandmas. Bless them. Help them know how special you, they are to you. Be with them that one day they can have that joy that Naomi experienced and the friendship she had also in this young woman named Ruth. We ask all of this through the name of our Savior, Jesus, born of the Virgin in Bethlehem, died, crucified, and coming back again one day in glory. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.